right. It is here. This is the Starlink in motion antenna. I have it. It has arrived. This is the mount. This is the antenna itself, and it is time to get it installed. Hi guys, this is Andy from Mobile Must Have, and in this video we are going to continue my upgrade process of the inter internet in my fifth wheel. Um, and today we are installing the flat high performance Starlink antenna that is designed for in motion use with RVs. The installation process seems pretty straightforward. It's basically going to be mounting the mount itself, four screws go in, attaching the Starlink antenna, and then routing a cable. Uh, so let's get up on the roof, kind of give you a quick overview of the plan there, and let's get to it. So let's just do a quick unboxing. Um, I've already gone through it, so I've already it's kind of already open. But first, in the small box here, you're going to get the mount. Mount comes shipped separately. It's just a straight little piece of metal with some foam. Pretty straightforward there. You're going to get a template that's going to be if you need to use a template for anything. And then right up front, big, flat, high performance antenna. Uh, I'm going to set that up there. Now the rest of the box, I don't know how you can see it there. Uh, we got a couple of things. So you're going to have this is the cable that goes from the antenna down into your power supply. And then the power supply goes right into power. Now, I am not going to use the router that goes directly into the peplink. Um, so we don't even need all the extra stuff. And then it comes with cables or a silicone. And then we're going to use some of these parts and some of them not mainly. We're just going to use the lag bolts and then the Starlink um, specific like uh, machine screws that will connect the mount to the Starlink. So probably just the lag bolts that and then of course die core. A couple other tools we're going to have on us is I do need to drill a new hole. So we're going to bring this set up with us. Okay, that's set. We have our die core hot gun. We've got all our screws. Okay, so before I head up on the roof, I mentioned I'm not going to use the Starlink router, and I'm actually going to be plugging Starlink directly into my Peplink router. Now, I'm doing that for a couple reasons. The main is for easeability and use. We use the Peplink as kind of the main command center, the main primary source that gives me Wi Fi. Uh, but then that I can, with that one center, I can tell the Wi-Fi or how my device is connected to the internet, where is my internet coming from? Is it coming from an LTE connection, a 5G connection, Starlink, a Wi-Fi is WAN. It is my main command center. So I tell the Peplink how we're going to connect to the internet and then my devices get internet that way. And now Starlink is going to be just kind of one more tool in this toolkit per se of how we're going to stay connected to the internet. So that's what's going to make this really great. And that's why we don't need the Starlink router because I already have that and I get a a way better router overall with the peplink and so we're just going to kind of bypass that but starlink now will be great and directly related or di directly linked into my peplink unit first thing we're going to do is make sure we pick a location i could have gone back here i actually ended up going right behind the front ac which is what the camera is sitting on here um and that seemed to be the best location i also know parking under trees up front seems to be the less obstructed um, I'm cleaning it off here to make sure my surface is going to adhere the die core really well and not get in the way with any dirt. Uh, make sure you use the right cleaning material though for your particular roof type. Then it's all about lining up your mount, trying to center it, make sure it's aligned, um, and then marking it. Now there's four screws I'm using here. It's going to come with the kit. The four lag screws are what I'm basically the only thing I'm using to really adhere it to the roof itself. And then you also need to pull out the four machine screws. There's two individual ones for the bottom and two for the top of the antenna, um, which mount the antenna to the mount. You'll see more of those in a second. Once it's lined up, I basically put marks on the roof itself. Then I did a pre-dab of die core on each of those particular locations. Um, and then I'm going to screw in through the die core. I've done this with solar panels and other things before, and this keeps basically water out all the way through the screw channel. 
um, so I don't have any issues of water going through, um, even if it gets under the die core from another location. And a key thing is not to over tighten these lag screws as that can cause stripping and more issues within your, your surface. Um, so tighten them, but not over tighten them. Uh, and then once those are in place, I go back over with more die core so that there's no water coming in from the top and the bottom where the actual mount is now sitting on top of uh, a die core too. So everywhere the surface is watertight. Then we're going to be running the cable. So I'm actually running the cable through an existing solar box or kind of cable drop I've got. It's a junction box from Home Depot. I don't think it's that expensive overall. And then I ran a two inch PVC pipe through that hole. There's a video on this entire install from Eric, um, which I'll link above. But basically I'm just running this cable through. Now I'm not using a cable grommet here because I didn't have one big enough at the time for this. Um, so I'll show you at the end what I did there. Um, and then just run that cable through, um, yeah, through the existing opening I've got. It's been a really nice system to have with this kind of cable system. So if I'm running new antennas or anything for me, testing all this stuff, it's been really nice, but definitely something I'd recommend too. Uh, yeah, so pulling all the cable through the entire box and kind of getting all the slack out and then kind of stuffing it down into the kitchen cabinet, which is directly below. Once the cabling is more or less done, I didn't make it perfect just yet, it's about attaching kind of those machine screws to the Starlink antenna. I've done the front two or the bottom two, um, and those are a little different because they're gonna actually like fall into place and kind of lock in what you see there. And then the top two are going to be perfectly aligned with the mount and the antenna to, to screw in. They were pretty challenging to do. Not challenging from a technique standpoint, but I just had to be patient and make sure the threading got right. It was a hard angle to get to. Um, but once you get the thread right and everything aligned, they they uh, they screwed in pretty easily. And then they tighten with an Allen wrench. Um, so make sure you bring that up on the roof with you and that tool. Uh, then uh, at the very end, I attached the cable and pulled the rest of the slack out. The challenging part here for me was just making sure not to get additional die core on anything as I did this kind of all within an hour. Um, so just gonna keep that in mind, that die core is gonna be sticky for the first 24 hours or so. So don't, don't accidentally run into it. And then for me, I, I heard that if you get material on the top of this antenna, it can affect its performance. So I just used the multi-purpose cleaner just to kind of wipe off the top, make sure I didn't have any oils or grease or anything that I had on me as I was moving this um, around. Um, it sh I'll probably clean this as often as I clean my solar panels, which you can see is not as often as I should in the middle of the desert. Um, but yeah, so I'm keeping this kind of clean and making it start with a, a nice clean surface. Uh, final step for me up on the roof was really just to make sure the cable, uh, any excess cable I took off the roof, I didn't want that flapping around, um, pulled that through the rest of the box and, and just kind of cleaned up that entire project. And there's kind of the final results. So uh, you've got a nice brand new white antenna on my four year old yellowing roof, um, which looks really nice. Um, I feel really good about the install. The placement's good. It's right in front of my bathroom fan behind my front AC. Um, and yeah, so it's looking really good. The cable run is actually, for me, it's probably only four or five feet between where the antenna is and that cable box. You can see the two other seven-in-one antennas I have on there from bundles and then other testing ones. Um, and then my solar cables kind of all going into that one location. So probably need some zip ties, but overall it's looking really good. Uh, for this particular part of our install. And then final kind of close-up look of the mount with the die core coming out underneath the bottom. That to me is exactly what I wanted to see. It shows me that the bottom is sealed. Die core is also really sticky. So if any of those lag screws have an issue, die core alone will probably hold this down with no issue. So really excited about how that's looking overall. I think this is, this is exactly what I was hoping to get out of this install. Okay, at this point, I've basically dropped my cable through the roof from the gray box outside. I have pushed it from the actual cabinet that's connected to the ceiling. And then I'm now underneath that cabinet behind like what we call it a pantry attainment from this cool keystone unit. Uh, so now I'm gonna feed basically what comes into the power supply. 
So I'm going to have to find a place to mount the power supply and then out of the power supply will basically come an ethernet cable and that's what goes directly into the pep wave. So let me find some room in all of this to mount this and get cables working and then basically we're ready to power up. I would say I'm lucky in the sense that I need like six inches of cable. They do send you about, I'm not sure, it's probably 20 feet. It's quite a bit. Um, so I'm just going to zip tie this all together, try and keep it out of the way as much as possible. But basically, this is all I need. Just one to that one. Now, the power supply is pretty nifty. It's going to have these little logos on it, so you know exactly which one you're plugging into. So you've got the little antenna. I guess it's upside down. So you're going to have your, like, your little space antenna on this one. And then you've got, that's a that's a network icon, so that's going to be for your, your LAN one, which is going to be what I've got here. And then the cables themselves are like angled, and then there's even a little groove on one side so you can only plug it in one way it's definitely not a micro usb it's got a similar but much larger shape to it so it's definitely a one direction cable okay now from here i have this cable that has dropped down from the upper cabinet which we will also use to plug in this also is a one-way cable Make sure it is plugged in. Huh. Plug in. Now, at this point, I have two plugs left. One is I now have to actually plug the power adapter into the Ethernet that goes into the PepLink solution. Uh, so that's going to go right into the WAN port of whichever PepWave you have. I have a BR2 in this particular um, setup here, so I'm going to go into the second WAN port. And then we're going to apply everything for power and link up to the actual satellite. All right, and just to see if you can see it. So the sign of success is going to be that light and we'll get to activation. So now let's dive into quickly how to activate that and then you're all set to go. Now that we have everything installed, really all we need to do is go into the PepWave and make sure we have all of our WAN settings in the right spot. What I mean by that is we've plugged in Starlink into our WAN port. We need to make sure on the PepWave we have the WAN port where we want it. If you want to be using Starlink as an active source of internet, you need to move that WAN setting to priority one. It will be green once everything has been set up. Um, if you want to have it as a backup, you can move it to priority two or priority three based on how you have those settings and it'll be kind of in a standby mode for you. So make sure you do that after you get everything plugged in and you have Starlink activated. Now the activation process for Starlink is pretty much straightforward too. You're going to get a piece of paper in your Starlink box. It's going to have about six different steps, which is pretty straightforward. It's go to Starlink, go to this buy page, check out, put in this code, and that will basically give you your starting your activation. And that will basically set you up for their monthly plan with Starlink using your existing hardware. So that's how they kind of set up that monthly plan. Very straightforward. Now it will say it takes about an hour to get service and, and actually let your satellite connect once you have power. We saw connection in about 15 minutes. So just give it a give it a bit of time, come back and check on it and you'll see it kind of connect, connect in a few minutes. I was able to log in with my mobile app and track the status of my antenna as it was coming online. Now I don't have the router, so I wasn't seeing a direct connection. I was able to see it through basically a cloud connection that the internet was using. So as soon as that antenna came online, um, or even if it was searching, I was able to see that that was the status and then it connected for me on the mobile app. So that was one way I was able to track it. Now it's actually been a few days since I've done the installation itself. We've moved to about four different cities. We've gone from Tucson, Arizona to Phoenix to Petrified Forest, and now we're in Santa Fe. And I've been doing pretty consistent testing as we've moved along. I have seen really great performance 
um, from this antenna. We are still seeing a couple dropouts every couple minutes, you know, milliseconds at times, um, but kind of standard to what we used to see with the regular rectangular dish. Um, the speeds I'm getting, I seem a little bit better, but I am not testing in the same zone I was before. I will be doing that soon. Um, but I am getting up to 200 megabytes when I'm doing some speed tests. In reality, I'm still seeing great speeds of around 100 in usability, um, but I'm also bonding that with Speed Fusion and a couple other really cool things, um, which we have more information on coming soon. So um, overall, I'm seeing good performance. I have been doing some testing while in motion, and it does work. You can be driving and get connectivity. However, just like cellular can be, I have it was dropping out on us probably more frequently than I was seeing like Verizon drop out as it was jumping towers, driving through the mountains of like Flagstaff and, and eastward. Um, so it's not super consistent or any more consistent, I would say, than cellular, but it was connecting. I was getting 60 megs on the top of a mountain, which was cool when I had nothing else, no Verizon, no T-Mobile, AT&T. So it is proving that it can be really beneficial in those places. The last thing I haven't tested just yet is parking under trees. I've been in the desert. I am going eastward, so that will be a follow-up video we can do where we can show kind of what we're going to get under trees as I go further kind of into Tennessee and then northbound. We'll do more videos on that there. Now, last thing is I did do a couple more tests of climbing up on my roof and verifying those bolts underneath were tight. I did find one I had to tighten, and I would do that, especially after your first or second drive, as things kind of wiggle and jiggle into place and settle, you might find you have a loose screw. So it's something I'm going to keep um, keep attention of, and I might look at adding a lock washer there uh, to constantly give it some tension. Um, it's, it's normally what I'd expect to find on, on a system like that, but we'll see. That'll be something we update you guys on if that changes. I also was able to kind of finish out where I had that cable going in. I put in a temporary kind of uh, plug here to keep water out. I've got some really cool products pending, so new videos on those soon with IcoTech technology coming out and that's what I'll be moving to. So short-term solution here for a much cooler kind of solution coming soon. All right guys, that is the main part of this video. If you have any questions, you can leave comments down below, but it is best if you email us info at mobilemusthave.com or you can chat with a live agent um, with our chat feature that's at the bottom right hand side of our store. All right guys, it's been great talking to you. This is Andy from Mobile Must Have and I hope to see you on the road. Bye.